I'm Pastor George Borkard, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Holy Absolution, I Forgive You, Men Forgiving Sins. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Hey, before we get started, I want to give a shout out to St. Mark Lutheran Church in Conroe, Texas. My old congregation! That for your generous gift to Higher Things, you keep us Daring to be Lutheran and having a blast while we do it on social media. Thank you, Texas. God bless Texas. All right, so uh, how can a man forgive sins? John chapter 20. Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they are not forgiven. Or if you retain them, they are retained. So how can a man forgive sins? Well, because Jesus says so. He breathes life into his, his apostles, his sent ones. The same breath that brought life into Adam breathes life into his men who are sent with three words. I forgive you. Two words in Latin, two words in Greek. And that's really what the gospel is all about. The voice of the gospel is absolution. I forgive you. You, you can't get anything more gospel than the words, I forgive you. I forgive you changes the reality of the universe that we live in. From sinner to saint, from hell bound to heaven bound, from death to life, all with the words, I forgive you. How can a man, how can a man forgive sins? Well, it starts with the man, the one who dies on the cross to earn our salvation. With his holy life and his bitter sufferings and death, his death on the cross gives the forgive you. His resurrection is our justification, our I forgive you. So his death earns the I forgive you. His resurrection gives the I forgive you. That's a better way of putting it. Now, so we, so the reason for absolution is because the Lord gives it. Every other question and every other problem and every other situation pertaining to absolution flows from the Lord giving this gift. Well, I thought that we could go to God with my sins. You can. Well, I don't need a man. You don't. But that doesn't need, doesn't mean that the Lord doesn't give a, give a man to forgive your sins. Well, what about what about the other sacraments? Doesn't baptism give the forgiveness of sins? Yes. Doesn't um, the Lord's Supper give the forgiveness of sins? Yes. So why absolution? Because with the gospel, there's always more. There's always more forgiveness, always more life, always more salvation. So this, so, so it's it's not a question of do I need absolution? The Lord gave it. And yes, you do need absolution. You see. Sometimes in life, our sins are locked away in bunkers. Bunkers that are hid so deep in our life that we don't want to talk about them. We don't want to sort of release them. We live in them. We keep them super secret. And what we need is a smart bomb, a buster, bunking, a buster bunker bomb that will blow up the hidden parts of our lives. And that's what absolution is. It has two parts. First, that we confess our sins. That's our work. Come to God with our need for forgiveness. And then that we receive absolution from the pastor as from God himself, not doubting, but firmly believing that by it, the absolution, our sins are forgiven by God in heaven. And we can be certain that the forgiveness that we hear from our pastor is just invalid and certain, even in heaven as Christ our dear Lord says so himself, because he says in John 20, whatsoever sin you forgive, it's forgiven. Whatsoever sin you retain is retained. Does this mean that, that God hinges his forgiveness on the proclamation of men? Yes. He's been doing that ever since he sent the apostles to forgive and retain sins. But if it helps you understand the absolution spoken by your pastor as the delivery of the Calvary achieved forgiveness. So it's not that that absolution that the, the God's like, well, I wasn't going to forgive, and then and then Pastor Borkert said, I forgive you, and now I have to. No, the salvation has been achieved on the cross, and 
and delivered to all men in the resurrection. That application of it is occurring in absolution for you, bunker busting the situation and blowing up that part of your life that needs forgiveness. What about the general absolution in, um, in the divine service? Well, that's like carpet bombing the whole of your life with with like a B-52 bomber, just blowing, just, just bombing everything in your world with forgiveness and changing the reality of everything in your world. Well, what about the forgiveness that I get from my neighbor when I come to my neighbor and I ask my neighbor to forgive me? Same forgiveness. Well, what's the difference? Well, the difference is that your pastor has been called, sent, apostled, in order to speak that word of forgiveness to you. And their whole job, is to speak that word of forgiveness and to bury the sins that you confess to them so that they would never come back up again. You can't you can't be promised that from your neighbor who may bring up your sins again. Um, but the only forgiveness there is, the only forgiveness that we have in Christ is the forgiveness achieved by Jesus on the cross, by his holy life and his bitter sufferings and death, the justification one for all uh, by his resurrection on the third day. And all of it hinges upon the words, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. I'm Pastor George Barker with the gospelly words, I forgive you. And this has been another Higher Things video short. <laughs>